the nun too, we find Sister Irene basically living the quiet life. You know, she had her adventure in the first film and um, she thinks that that chapter is closed. And she's, uh, in the last film, she's committed herself to a life of, uh, of a nun. And, and uh, this is it in practice. She is um, in a convent in Italy and living a life of service, a very quiet, humble life. And I thought that was, um, I thought there was something really captivating about that. I think it, it um, the idea of, uh, of someone who went on this incredible adventure and then wants to live this quiet life. I, you know, that's kind of reminds me of like, you know, stories that I love that, um, you know, almost like, you know, Unforgiven or even Ram the first Rambo where you have these um, extraordinary people who are now living these kind of anonymous lives. But the legend of the, the previous movie is, is kind of chased her down and, and the, the legend of this, this, demon nun and also the uh the nun that defeated her has circulated as kind of folklore around the uh, the different convents and so uh even though they don't know it's her it's kind of she's kind of the the legends chasing her at the uh at the end of the first nun um we think that valak has been defeated unfortunately we get a tease that uh this kind of uh terrible revelation that that valak lives and Valak has escaped within Maurice that Maurice is possessed and working as a vessel um, and uh, but Maurice doesn't know this and he's been traveling um, from Romania across Europe and over these past five years there's been a series of these unexplained murders and um, the uh, they they all kind of like follow the the path that Maurice has been on. And Maurice, we find Maurice in, in this film, he looks like he settled down in a boarding school in the south of France. And um, if you didn't see the previous movie, you would have assumed that um, everything was all right and, uh, and he was gonna be uh, living a, a wonderful, peaceful life. He had a friendship with one of the you know, young little girls there and then also a flirtation with one of the teachers. Um, so it seems like it could have been a perfect life for him, but we know that something dreadful is just around the corner. I think that there was a great opportunity to shoot in, in France um, in a number of different respects. I think, first of all, just pivoting off of um, Frenchie, Maurice's character in the first one, there was this kind of great reversal between the two films. The first one being that, um, you know, he was a, a Frenchman in Romania, this, this fish out of water. So I think that in the, the earliest draft with Akela, we really liked the idea of of just turning things on their head in this film where he wouldn't be a fish out of water. He would actually, um, he would be, you know, in his, uh, in his homeland or at least, uh, uh, at least in France, he's French Canadian, but you know, France was the, uh, the, the closest spot from uh, Romania. And, um, and then the idea that he, he could actually find someone who was, um, who was not from France, that uh, he befriends Anna, who's, uh, uh, he befriends Kate, who's played by Anna Popowell. Um, who her and her daughter are Irish and they've, uh, uh, they've come from Ireland and are now living in France and they're the outsiders in this country. So I thought there was, there was a great opportunity there. Beyond that, France has so much great history. It has so much great like cinematic history. I'm a huge fan of Diabolique, um, which is this just like, you know, classic French film set in a uh, French boarding school. There's actually a lot of little nods to that movie in this one. Um, that'll let people discover. I won't, uh, I won't call, them, call them all out. But um, I, th I think that there was so many, there, there's such a great history in France and, and um, just presented just such a great opportunity. Well, if you're gonna shoot in France in a boarding school, you gotta have some French mean girls. I think that that's just essential. I think there's like a, a requirement somewhere. Um, the, uh, we, you know, we have, one, um, we have a couple, uh, we have basically a little click and that is, uh, they, they terrorize one of the new students, um, this girl, Sophie, who's uh, played by Caitlin Rose Downey. And they are, you know, you know they're the, uh, the insiders of the school. They know all the, the dark secrets and they, um, they're both teasing Sophie, but then kind of trying to kind of rope them and in, rope her into uh, to their little games. And, um, and the, the, the games that they play are tied into the history of the school. There's definitely, the school has a lot of dark history and, um, and they are 
semi aware of it, not entirely aware of it. They have their own interpretation of it. And, and, um, and we get to see how uh, that becomes a, a central part of the film. A great thrill ride, a great scary movie, a classic scary movie. I think that that was one of the big things that I wanted with this, that um, it, it should just feel timeless. There should be something that is um, really classic about the film. It also needs to be ruthlessly scary. There's, uh, I think that that's what audiences expect when um, they're coming to a Conjuring movie and especially to a Nun movie. Um, she's an icon of horror and, uh, and I'm really excited for, uh, for people to see it.